The formula you're seeing on your screen is the formula we use when we are trying to find the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor. And we said that capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor is equivalent to the permittivity. Multiply that by the cross-sectional area of the plate, the area of either plates. Divide that by the distance between the two capacitors. Now, we have two capacitors here. We have a capacitor that does not have a dielectric between it. It's, it's plates and we have a capacitor that has got dielectric between the plates. Now we said that another dielectric is an insulator and it can either be water, it can be oil, it can be air. But that is a dielectric for you. Now, if we got the ca using the previous formula, if we got the capacitance, we, we can calculate the capacitance of this capacitor. We can also calculate the capacitance of that capacitor without the dielectric. Now, when we get the capacitance of those two capacitors and we find their ratio, we are going to get a terminology we shall call the relative permittivity. Now, what is relative permittivity? It is simply the ratio of the capacitance of the capacitor when there is a dielectric in between the plates to the capacitance of the capacitor that does not have a dielectric in between its plates. In other words, defining it, the relative permittivity is the ratio of the capacitance of a capacitor with the dielectric. Relative permittivity is the ratio of the, cap the capacitance of the capacitor with the dielectric between the plates to the capacitance of the capacitor when there is no dielectric between its plates. The relative permittivity is going to be equal to the capacitance of the capacitor when there is a dielectric in between, which is that, to the capacitance of the capacitor when there is no dielectric in between. And that is going to be that is going to be equal to this is the capacitance of the capacitor when there is no dielectric in between, which is uh, the permittivity of that dielectric multiplied by the area, divide that by the distance of separation between the two, divide that by the capacitance of the same capacitor when there is no dielectric in between. And when there is no dielectric in between, we are having epsilon naught, the permittivity of free space, divide, multiply that by the area of the same capacitor, divide that by D, the distance of separation. So when we divide those two expressions, we shall end up with the a ratio when the, the permittivity of the dielectric to the permittivity of free space. So meaning that is an, an, uh, the expression for relative permittivity. So in other words, this brings us to a conclusion that the relative permittivity is the ratio of the permittivity of a substance, which is that, this is the relativity of a substance, to the permittivity of free space. And permittivity of free space is what has been denoted as by epsilon naught. And then two, relative permittivity has no units, and relative permittivity of free space is always equal to one. Dielectric strength. Let's look at this more like tensile strength or you look, you're having a material and you have loaded it with some bit of load. Of course, if the material is elastic, it will endure, it will keep extending, it will be extending because it is elastic. But then it will reach a point whereby it won't be elastic anymore, it can't stretch anymore. And as a result, it loses its elasticity and it breaks or it, it's, it loses its elasticity and if you continue imposing that load on it, it will eventually break. That is in mechanics. Now relate that to this dielectric strength. We have dielectric, we, sometimes we, we shall put these insulators we call dielectrics in between the plates of a parallel plate capacitor. Now these insulators also have got strength, a, a limit to their strength. So now if we are defining what the electric strength is in simple terms, we shall simply say that it is the measure of the electrical strength of the material as an insulator. Or we can say that the electric strength is defined as uh, the maximum voltage that is required to produce a dielectric breakdown through the material. And this voltage that is required to break down this insulation is expressed in terms of volts per unit thickness. So 
in simple terms you can say that the maximum voltage that can be applied to a material before it breaks down is what we are calling dielectric strength and by definition we can also refer to it as the potential gradient at which the insulation of the dielectric material breaks down and the spark passes through it let's examine the effect of a dielectric on the capacitance of a capacitor or a parallel plate capacitor. Now, when we put a dielectric between a parallel plate capacitor into the gaps of a parallel plate capacitor, how does this dielectric affect the capacitance? Now, here we are having a capacitor with two plates. This is a negatively charged plate and this is a positively charged plate. There is no dielectric in between the plates. So it means that in between the plates there is a field and this field is acting in that direction and we have called that field EO E subscript O that's the field between the plates now we are going to introduce a dielectric in between these two plates now when you introduce a dielectric or an insulator in between the plates what happens initially uh, this dielectric has got its molecules inside it that are random but then when we introduce these molecules into this field e naught these molecules are going to be polarized so when they are polarized you'll find that near the surface of the dielectric the surface that is next to the positive plate we shall have uh, molecules that are polarized in such a way that electrons will be attracted at this end likewise on the port on the on the negative plate near the surface will have positive charges on the surface of the dielectric so what does this mean it means that we are having now two fields the first the, we have a field that is due to the plates and then now we are having a field that is being brought about by the polarization of the dielectric but the field that is being brought about by the polarization of the dielectric is acting in the opposite direction to the field due to the plates how we all know that the field moves from positive to negative this is the positive plate that's the negative plate and so the field due to the plate is going to move from this direction in that direction and we are calling that field e naught but then when we introduce the dielectric into the into the in between the plates and we, we find that this positive induces a negative charge negative charges on the surface of this of this dielectric as a result of polarization of the molecules inside the dielectric likewise this negative is going to induce a positive charge on the surface of the dielectric so it means that you're having a dielectric that is polarized with a negative on the surface this way and the positive on the surface that way so what does that mean it means that there's going to be a field that is created inside in between the plates which we are calling ep but this field is acting in the opposite direction to this one the field due to the plates because this ep it's from positive to negative so the field acts in that direction so what does that mean it means that we are having two fields we are having a field acting in that direction we are having another field in the same space that is acting in the opposite direction so it means at the end of the day we are going to get a resultant field uh, as a result of these two so the resultant field we get after this field cancels out with that one is going to be less than the actual field that is supposed to be here so how this does this affect the capacitance of this capacitor that's what we seek to explore we see that the field due to the plates e naught minus the field due to the due to the polarization of the molecules which we are calling ep is going to give us an effective and a resultant field er of course this effective field er will be less much less so after getting that effective field er which is much less from the equation for intensity of the parallel plate capacitor e is going to be v over d uh, getting the voltage here making v the subject of the formula we know that the voltage is going to be equal to e times d since the effective the, the, the effective field or the effective intensity is going to reduce 
it means that the value of V will reduce. I mean, if you look at this expression, the voltage between the plates is going to be equal to the intensity E times D. And we are having the intensity reducing because of this. So when the intensity reduces, it means that the amount of voltage between the plates is also going to reduce. So when V also reduces, how does that affect the capacitance? We know that capacitance is the charge per unit potential difference across the plates like we have seen here capacitance c is going to be the charge per unit pd now if this value of v has reduced it means that it's going to increase the value of c so since v reduces capacitance will automatically increase and so that is how the capacitance is affected by the dielectric so so meaning that if you introduce the the electric in between the plates of a parallel plate capacitor it's going to increase the capacitance and that brings us to that conclusion that the capacitance of a capacitor c will increase with the existence of a dielectric thanks for watching if you want more of these videos simply subscribe to this channel otherwise for more videos simply subscribe to kisembo academy for the benefit of your colleagues out there who would like to watch this tutorial simply share the video Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video for Kisembo Academy. This is Arnold Rangakuranya.